Today, let's go over Vav Conversive. What is the Vav Conversive? Well, it simply inverts. It gives you the converse opposite of what follows. So, if you have a Vav Conversive plus imperfect, it becomes perfect. If you have Vav Conversive plus a perfect, it becomes imperfect. Let's start by looking at Vav Conversive plus the imperfect, and then we'll cover the Vav Conversive plus the perfect later. All in good time, my friend. So Vav Conversive has other names as well. We're just gonna use Conversive per the red hymnal here. I've heard Convective as well. The point is it converts. And it converts typically, but not exclusively, in narrative. It can happen in poetry, but usually context will be key. Now with the imperfect, we take the Vav conjunction and add it to the verb. The vowel, which is a Shava, will change to a Pathak. And then the imperfect prefix will add a Dagesh, a Dagesh Forte. So looking at Katal, when we add the Vav conversive to the Katal Cal imperfect, we get as follows. Vayiktol, vatiktol, vatiktol, vatiktali, vayiktol, vayiktalu, vatiktolna, vatiktalu, vatiktolna, vaniktol. The key here is that the Vav conversive converts the imperfect force into perfect. So instead of translating these as, and he will kill, we are going to translate this perfect, and he killed. Now, note the first common singular. There's no dogish in the olive because it cannot take it. So instead we get compensatory lengthening and the pathak underneath the vav becomes a comets. Otherwise the spelling's pretty straightforward. Now I will note, sometimes imperfect can occur with a vav and it's not a vav conversive. You will know it's not vav conversive because there will be no dogish forte in the prefix and there will be no pathak under the vav. In that sense, you know it's a regular vav conjunction and there is no conversion going on. Now I mentioned before, context is key. So note these things that will help you determine if you're working with a vav conversive. Now, obviously, I already mentioned the diagnostics, right? The dogesh forte, the pathak, or in the first common singular, the comets. These will help you determine if it's a vav conversive. But note these other helpers. Usually, the vav conversive imperfect will be linked to a perfect main verb. When this occurs, the imperfect vav conversive is providing additional force and flavor temporally, sequentially, or just adding something extra to that main verb. So you might add some extra words in your translation, some helping words to convey that idea if it's temporal, for example and then, as opposed to simply and. If it's sequential, and then, something like that. So and when, and then, something along those lines. Now, sometimes you'll have a specific past tense modifier that will start off a sentence or a phrase, and it is the cal imperfect of haya to be plus the vav conversive. You're not gonna translate it. Instead, it simply marks past tense. And then what follows will be translated in the past tense. Vai he, vai he. When you see vai he, you know you're dealing with past tense. It marks the temporal. So you're gonna translate it with when, before, after, something along those lines. In other words, it's showing time. As we mentioned before, Hebrew doesn't have time built into the verbs, but it does show time in context. And this is one of those context pieces that you need to be aware of. 
additional prepositions may help you to know which kind of temporal aspect to translate with, when, after, so on, so forth. Now keep in mind, sometimes the sentence will begin with an imperfect vav conversive and then include some aspect of time, like in a preposition or our haya verb in vav conversive imperfect. So the word order can be a bit flexible. But again, all of those aspects will be present. Now, when it comes to negative particles, it does not like vav conversives. Uh, and part of that is because usually the negative particle will take the vav. So then there's no reason to include a vav on the verb, right? So sometimes you can go in and out of vav conversives when dealing especially with negative particles, and it's okay, that's all right. Lastly, uh, sometimes with uh, our weak verbs, the, the spelling with vav conversives is, is gonna be a little different. The long and short of it is there's oblaut, there's change, there's vowels, changes, compensatory lengthening, so on and so forth. But again, you're going to see vav pathak. That's a clear indication. It's a vav conversive plus context. And now we come to the perfect vav conversive. Now this one looks identical to a vav conjunction added to the verb cal perfect. So context will be key in determining is this a regular vav conjunction or is this a vav conversive? There's no dogesh forte, there's no pathak, it's just the vav conjunction added to a verb. So context will be key. Vikatol, vikatla, vikatalta, vikatalt, vikatalti, vikatlu, uktaltem, uktalten, vikatalnu. When it is a vav conversive, contextually, you will invert the perfect into imperfect. So it will mark future tense. Instead of and he killed, translate it, and he will kill. Now note in the second and uh, the, in the second masculine plural, second feminine plural, our vav conversive ends up becoming a shurik because the next vowel is a shava. There are some variations in the accents. It might be helpful to be able to recognize that. I don't think you need to memorize it but it could be helpful in terms of being able to recognize when it's a vav conversive. Now, these perfect vav conversives can be used really for the prophetic, looking towards the future. And again, context being key, usually these perfect vav conversives will follow an imperfect verb. Hence, you're dealing with incomplete action and in this context, it's action to be completed in the future. Now, we can also have a modifier, just like we had in the imperfect vav conversive with haya. We can have a perfect vav conversive haya. And this one is the future marker, whereas the imperfect haya vav conversive was a past tense marker, temporal marker. So that's the difference here, v'haya. It's third masculine singular, cal perfect of haya plus the vav conversive. You'll also have imperative verbs as your main verb plus cal perfect vav conversive. And again, it will be translated as a future. And in this sense, the future is a form of command. Why? Because it's following an imperative which is a command. Now, when it comes to parse verbs that have the vav conversive, include it. You can say, uh, this is third masculine singular, cal perfect of haya plus vav conversive, and then give the dynamic translation. In this case, well, it's not even translated. <laughs> well, I hope you found this video helpful. It was focused on the vav conversive with the cal perfect and cal imperfect. Next week, we will get into commands. So stick around, we'll see you then.